Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya You know which page here in the introduction here. Mm. Huh? Twenty six. Twenty six. Mm. After yoga, we work uh, uh, not with our body. 27, page 27, introduction. Mm-hmm. Oma kya timaranya sa kananchana salakyam chakshurun militam yena tasma shigurave namaha si chaitanya manobhistam stapitam yena bhutale svayam rupa katha mayam dadati sva patantikam chai si krishna chaitanya prabhunitananda shi advaita kadadha shi vasadi gora bhakta rinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So Srila Prabhupada wrote uh, quite a very long introduction, over 30 pages. Introduction in the Bhagavad Gita. And we will continue reading from page 27. Here it is stated, we work not with our body, actually, but with our mind and intelligence. So if the intelligence and the mind are always engaged in the thought of the Supreme Lord, then naturally the senses are also engaged in his service. Superficially, at least, the activities of the senses remain the same, but the consciousness is changed. The Bhagavad Gita teaches one how to absorb the mind and intelligence in the thought of the Lord. Such absorption will enable one to transfer himself to the kingdom of the Lord. If the mind is engaged in Krishna's service, then the senses are automatically engaged in his service. This is the art and this is also the secret of Bhagavad Gita. Total absorption in the thought of Sri Krishna. So I will speak something about that first. It's connected with the previous where, uh, paragraph where Prabhupada uh, quotes yogi, the verse Yoginam Apisarvisham from Bhagavad Gita 6.47. Of all yogis, the one with great faith who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and then the strength and loving service to me is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. So one who thinks of the Supreme Lord always is the greatest yogi, the super must jnani, and the greatest devotee at the same time. The Lord further tells Arjuna that as a Kshatriya he cannot give up his fighting, but if Arjuna fights remembering Krishna, then he will be able to remember Krishna at the time of death. But one must be completely surrendered in the transcendent loving service of the Lord. So here, this is related to, uh, to Arjuna's um, 
argument that uh, he's Kshatriya and he doesn't want to fight and he wants to become a yogi. So, so he considered to be a yogi is better than to be a Kshatriya. But that was not a Krishna's opinion because Krishna says uh, uh, transcendental activities or devotion to me is not depending on uh, action or renunciation. It, it's, uh, it is depending on the consciousness. So this is pointed out. So Prabhupada writes here, we work not with, the, with our body actually, but with our mind and intelligence. So with the, bo with the body, in other words, with the body we can uh, act in according to our nature, according to our profession, according to varna or ashram and ashrama, that's according to the nature. So it works. So the work is actually not influencing the consciousness if the consciousness is uh, fixed on Krishna. Then it's called activity in Krishna consciousness. So therefore we should uh, emphasize more our, our, um, our on the consciousness and in the, in the same time, with the, conscious, with the proper Krishna consciousness, uh, perform activities in the service of, of Krishna. Uh, or in a, any obligation or activity we perform, we always know I'm not the doer, because those who consider themselves I'm the doer, their, uh, Krishna tells, tells uh, their uh, at, uh, ass, ass like, we uh, mudhas, namam dushkriti namuda, huh? or those who are thinking I'm acting uh, without understanding that actually the material nature is acting and ultimately the transcendental in inner energy is acting, especially if you are a devotee then one is actually con con considered like an ass. An ass cannot understand that he is not his body. But a human being can realize that I am not his body, that I am spirit soul. But he is not rejecting the body, he is not rejecting his activities, he engages this all <coughs> in the service of Krishna. Like for example, uh, there is a story in the Chaitanya Bhagavat of, of um, Pundarik Vidyanidhi. Pundarik Vidyanidhi, he, he was uh, appearing like, like somebody who was very much attached. He was dressed like a king, decorated like that. He, he put oil in the, his hair many ornaments on his body and that way he came to Mayapur. So the friend of Gadada Pandit, Mukunda, Mukunda Data, uh, the Kirtaniya, the, the, the singer, he was a very good Kirtan singer, Mukunda Data, so he went to Gadada because Pundari Kvitianidi came from the same village, village as Mukunda from Bangladesh, uh, Chattagram. Uh, so he, he knew about uh, Pundarik and he, he went to Gadadhar. Gadadhar, he was a brahmachari. He was a renunciate from very birth. He was very close associate of Lord Chaitanya. Um, and he was not initiated at that time. So Mukunda, he understood a Gadadhar is actually a, an, uh, in the mood of Radharani. He's an in incarnation or, of Radharani. An aspect of Radharani is a, appeared in, in, as, as Gadadhar. And as such, it's naturally that uh, Pundarik Vidyanidhi is uh, his guru. 
because Pundarik Vidyanidhi is the father of Radharani, uh, Rishabhanu Maharaj. So Mukunda, he thought, oh, Gadadhar, you should go to this Pundarik Vidyanidhi. He is a, he, he a very great, great devotee, very dear to Lord Chaitanya, great Gora Bhakta. But when uh, Gadadhar saw how the, how the, uh, and he uh, saw uh, Pundarik Vidyanidhi, how he was dressed and his long hair and oil, oil in the hair and ornaments and lying on a divan, lo watching and uh, looking in, uh, in a mirror. And uh, somebody was fanning, of his servants were, was fanning him. There was a spit, spitting pot on the side, you know, for his pan, chewing pan. Uh, so then he, Kadada thought, oh, Mukunda, Mukunda you're, uh, you're tricking me, you're kidding me. Well, I'm, uh, do you want to trick me? And in the mind he thought, oh, this is, he cannot be a very great devotee and very dear to Lord Chaitanya because he seems to be like an attached materialist externally. But then uh, Mukunda, the, Mukunda, he understood the mind of, of, uh, of Gadadhar and he quoted the verse from, uh, from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. A verse uh, spoken by uh, Uddhava to Vidura, where he explains or narrates how, how, how is it possible for me to forget such a merciful Lord like Krishna, who even grants liberation uh, to an evil-minded witch who came in the disguise of a sattvi, of a very pious personality, but her breast was poisoned, smeared with poison to poison baby Krishna. And the Lord g gave her liberation and even granted her a position in Goloka as one of the mother's assistants of Mother Yashoda. How can I forget such a merciful Lord? So when Pundarik Vidyanidhi heard about this uh, verse, he, was, he became very ecstatic, he became very moved. So his power his increased that was kept inside. Sometimes this is not expressed outside. So, uh, but inside he was uh, constantly in this mood of, uh, of, of ecstatic love uh, to Krishna. So when he heard about this remembrance of Krishna from Uddhava to Vidura, so he, he, uh, he became very moved, he became very ecstatic. His uh, body came out of control. Uh, so he started to laugh, to cry, to roll on the ground, he jumped up and down, and he smashed all the beautiful furniture he had. And everything ha seemed to be unimportant for him, all these uh, material things, what seemed to be very prominent in his life, became completely unimportant. And uh, he was always calling out, speak more, speak more, speak more about this verse, about these uh, verses of uh, Krishna. Remind, uh, please remember me always about Krishna. So when uh, Gadada Pandit uh, heard about this, um, uh, saw, became witness of these ecstatic symptoms, but only a very elevated devotee uh, of, of Lord Chaitanya or Krishna could have, he understood, oh, I made a mistake. I only observed this person from the external point of view, but actually he is indeed a very great advanced devotee. <coughs> and later on he accepted initi initiation from him. He became his Diksha Guru. <coughs> or or Diksha disciple. Mm. So, uh, God <coughs> there's a verse, Vaishnavera Kriya Mudra Vigyayana Bhujaya. We cannot understand an uh, Vaishnava from the external point of view, from external appearance. We can see him, how he, how he actually serves, <coughs> serves the Lord, and also only an other advanced devotee can see who, 
uh, and, and who is advanced in Krishna consciousness. So Krishna consciousness is not so, so just a practice with the body and the mind and the intelligence we leave on the side. No? No, Krishna wants to explain, explains, you know, the activity is one thing, but at the same time we also have to use our intelligence and uh, our uh, mind in the in the in uh, in relation with Krishna, keep keep a fixed on Krishna. Huh? So in this way, one will become steady, steady in uh, devotional service. Sometimes we only act with the body, but actually with our intelligence and our mind, we are sleeping. Uh, we are spaced out, we are thinking about something else. But actually with the body, intelligence and mind, there should be one line. Uh, it should be fully uh, uh, concentrated on Krishna. This is actually real yoga. If we only practice yoga in a physical way, or bhakti yoga in physical way, there's one thing, for the, uh, we are engaged, we get some benefit, but there is a greater benefit if we are also engaging our mind and our words and our intelligence in the service of Krishna. Uh, Lord Chaitanya also uh, told uh, to his uh, descendants of the devotees, Okay, because he's a transcendental gardener who planted the bhakti tree or the, of the Sankhita movement who will spread all over the world. So he, he, he's the gardener himself, he became the tree himself, he was watering, cultivating the tree, and the tree gave very beautiful fruits, very sweet, very juicy, and he was relishing himself these fruits and he also asked all his uh, devotees and descendants in the future, please re relish these fruits, take these fruits as much as you can, relish yourself. And, uh, but this, uh, this uh, tree has so many fruits, uh, it, uh, the more you eat, uh, uh, and also distributed, the more it will increase. Uh, it will not, not uh, never, never finish. So, so therefore he ordered everyone, please take these fruits, relish first, and also distribute it to everyone else. Huh? In this way, everyone will uh, glorify Lord Chaitanya as, some, uh, as uh, somebody who is very, bene uh, how we say, very merciful, very benefactor for the whole world. Another name of Lord Chaitanya is, uh, is Vishwambar. Vishwambar, we heard this morning, Vishwambarai, Yuga Dharma Palau. So Vishwambara means he is the maintainer of the universe, but he is also the maintainer of the, of the, of the tree of bhakti. Huh? That means he is the maintainer of everyone's bhakti. He is the ins inspirator of everyone's bhakti, together with Lord Nityananda. Uh, Lord Chaitanya appeared in this world to, to, uh, to inaugurate this uh, bhakti process and this Sankhita movement uh, in form of these fruits of love of Godhead. And in um, this way they became very uh, great, great, greatly, ben gave a great benediction to the whole universe. Vishvambaro, Tvichavaro, Yuga Dharma Pala, Vandechaga, Priyakaro, Karuna Avatara. Therefore, they are Karuna Avatar. They're very, very merciful. <coughs> so, they, they uh, and Lord Chaitanya instructed everyone take these fruits and give it to others. Uh, and engage in this way in devotional service. Etavan Chanva Sapalyam Dehinam Ehi Dehi Shu Pranaira Tad Yava Cha Shraya Charanam Sata. Engage with your body, with your intelligence, with your words, with your mind, with your possessions, uh, for, the, for the welfare, for the Shraya Achara, 
for the ultimate benefit of the living entities. Guru Maharaj of, of uh, Silla Prabhupada also told him, uh, actually a general instruction to all of, all of all his followers that um, his desire is that every one of his disciples they should shed uh, many, many hectoliters of uh, blood for the uh, saving of the living entities who are embodied in this material world in a human form of life to benefit them. So first of all, we should engage our body, but in the same time also engage our mind in intelligence, our possessions, our dia, arta, vacha, the words, dia, vacha, prana, prana, the life energy, the senses, uh, in the service of Krishna. This is real yoga. So therefore, uh, uh, a, a devotee is automatically the best of all yogis because he is always engaged with his body, mind and words and intelli intelligence in the service of Krishna and in also in the service of all living entities to benefit them, to connect them with Krishna. And this is considered the greatest welfare activity. So um, Prabhupada uh, continues here. A modern man has struggled very hard to reach the moon, but he has not uh, tried very hard to elevate himself spiritually. If one has 50 years of life ahead of him, he should engage that brief time in cultivating this practice of remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This practice is the devotional process. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, Smaranam Padasevanam, Archanam Vandanam Dasyam, Sakyam Atmani Vedanam. Uh, these nine processes, of which the easiest is the Shravanam, hearing the Bhagavad Gita from the realized person, will turn one to the thought of the Supreme Being. This will lead the remembering. Uh, this will lead to remembering the Supreme Lord and will en enable one, upon leaving the body, to attain a spiritual body which is just fit for association with the Supreme Lord. The Lord further says, Abhyasa Yoga Yuktena Chetasa Nanyagamina Paramam Purusham Divyam Yati Parthanu Chintayan. He who meditates on me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me. Undeviated from the path, he or Arjuna is sure to reach me. This is not a very difficult process. However, one must learn it from an experienced person. Tatvigyartam sagurum eva One must approach a person who is already in the practice. Uh, the mind is always flying in this and that. But uh, direction and but one must practice concentrating the mind always on the form of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna or on the sound of his name. The mind is naturally restless, going higher uh, and tighter, but it can rest in the sound vibration of Krishna. A master meditate on para, Parama Purusha, Purusham, a supreme personality of Godhead in the spiritual kingdom, the spiritual sky, and thus attain him. The ways and the means for ultimate realization, ultimate attainment are stated in the Bhagavad Gita, and the doors of this knowledge are open to everyone. No one is barred out. out. That means nobody is rejected or not included or not invited. All classes of men can approach Lord Krishna by thinking of him, for hearing and thinking of him, are possible for everyone. The Lord further says, 9.32.33 Mam hi pate vi pa shritya, ye pi shu pa payonaya, striyo vajyas tata shudras tepi yam yanti param gatim, kim punar brahmana punya bhakta, rachashayas tata anityam asukam lokam, Imam prapya pachasvamam. 
Thus the Lord says that even a merchant, a fallen, wo uh, fallen woman, or a laborer, or even human beings in the uh, lo uh, lower stages of life can attain the Supreme. One does not need highly developed intelligence. The point is that anyone who accepts the principle of Bhakti Yoga and accepts the Supreme Lord as the Soma Bonum of life, as the highest target, the ultimate goal, can approach the Lord in the sp spiritual sky. If one adopts the principles enunciated in Bhagavad Gita, he can make his life perfect and make a permanent solution to all the problems of life. This is the sum and substance of the entire Bhagavad Gita. So here we stop with uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow's speaker will speak about the conclusion until the end of the introduction by Sila Prabhupada. So everyone is in invited or included in this practice. So it doesn't have to become a brahmana or a sage or a high, highly ele elevated transcendentalist. Everyone can take part, even, the, even a woman, an uneducated child. Well, woman, maybe if they read nowadays this kind, and a lowly, I would say, a fallen woman, even a fallen woman, they feel maybe offended. Uh, why Prabhupada is saying a fallen woman, why it is stated here. Uh, but in general, uh, we can understand in Kali Yuga, everyone is fallen. In previous ages, the woman was actually uh, more high, highly elevated. In Kali Yuga, everyone is fallen, everyone is like woman. Woman, woman is uh, meditating about man, man is about meditating about woman. Like Kapila Dev is saying, woman is Maya, illusion for the man, and for the, for the woman, man is, is, is illusion. So both, uh, both actually are illusion, so long as one is attached to this material body, one is in illusion, one is in, one is in, one is in Maya. Therefore, Kunti Devi. Uh, I had one verse here from Kunti Devi. In her prayers, she prays Tata Paramaham Sanam, Muninam Amala Latmanam, Bhakti Yoga Vidanatam, Katam Pashema Histriya. She prays to Lord Krishna. You yourself designed to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service under the hearts of the advanced transcendentalists and mental speculators who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit. Oh, how then can we women know you perfectly? So even the point is, even the great transcendentalists, the great sages who try to meditate, who have the ability and capacity to meditate and to understand the Lord, but even they have difficulty, even the Paramahamsa. Uh, the Paramahamsa is the transcendentalist. Huh? Uh, they uh, uh, become purified, uh, are purified, being able to discriminate between what is matter and what is spirit. Huh? Uh, I can understand, but uh, a, f a foolish uh, personality like or uh, was on the bodily can concept. Kunti Devi, she put herself in position of a foolish woman. Uh, although she was actually very elevated, she was a queen. She was very cultured, very uh, knowledgeable. She, knew, she uh, recited so many beautiful prayers to Lord Krishna when he left and uh, wanted to go to Dvaraka. So he, she offered many beautiful prayers, elevated prayers, and she was actually very bold. She was very, uh, very, uh, I would say, brave, uh, very strong lady. Uh, when her, when her uh, husband died, Pandu, she, she, uh, she grew up uh, five, five children, the five son, the Pandavas, uh, and she went through them through all, all their difficulties. Uh, they went to 
had to go through, through so many difficulties. At one point she even prayed, let all these difficulties again and again come upon me. Uh, the main thing, you know, that we can always have your presence, Krishna. Uh, because for the devotee, it's not a problem of, of a physical problem or like that, if Krishna is present. So the, if Krishna is the cent in the center, if Krishna is present, then the devotee is happy. Uh, the Pandavas had to go through physically through so many difficulties. Somebody, somebody may think, oh, how the Lord could tolerate that, how we could uh, arrange like that. Uh, but he actually did this to prove and to show to the world that even he, he, that his devotees, like the Pandavas, even when they are in great difficulties, they never give up Krishna. They never, uh, they never uh, go away from uh, Dharma, from the principles of re a religion, of, of truthfulness, tapasya, uh, not speaking lies, uh, and all these and uh, and all these principles of uh, dharma, uh, they, they never went away from that. Uh, even when they were in the forest, uh, they were always on the path of uh, dharma. Uh, that means they were always uh, related with the supreme truth and never deviated from that. Uh, so a woman. Uh, or any any man, any person, and in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita they stated, even a foolish child uh, can, uh, by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, understand Krishna and become a great devotee. So therefore the best education or the best uh, process, practice for everyone, because it is easy and sublime in the same time, is to engage in the bhakti process. Kirata und andere Polinde Polkasha, Shumba Yavana Kashadaya, Yenecha Papa, Apasha Ashraya, und so on. Shukadev Goswami in his prayer, he says, even the Kirata Huna Polinde Polkashas, even those who are not, not civilized, who are uh, outcast, who are not uh, connected with the Vedic civilization, they can take up the process of uh, bhakti. Uh, if they have the opportunity to associate with the devotees. And that's why uh, Sila Vyasadev actually meditated about Absolute Truth uh, and on, on his ripened stage of realization. That's stated in the first canto 7 chapter, text 4, Bhakti Yogena Manasi, uh, Samyak uh, Pranihite Male, Apashyat, Apashyat Purusham Purnam, Mayam chatat apashrayam. Thus he fixed his mind perfectly engaging in the link, uh, engaging it by linking it in the devotional service Bhakti Yoga without any tinge of materialism. And thus he saw the absolute personality of Godhead along with, uh, with his external energy, Maya, which was fully under his control. So Maya never touches Krishna. Krishna is always in the transcendent, transcendental platform. And uh, those who fix their mind on uh, Krishna, they also will become transcendentally purified and will live with him. Huh. That's the only way how we can enter ultimately to the platform of pure devotional service and make progress uh, in, uh, to get a taste in the Bhakti Yoga process. And ultimately, if one is very fortunate, one can get some higher realization of ecstatic feelings and, and love uh, to Krishna. So this process uh, leads us ultimately to this direction to become completely purified and become free of these uh, material illusions, or mater material conception of life. I'm man, I'm woman, 
I'm this, I'm that. Sarvapati vinir muktam, tapparate vina nirmalam, rishike na rishike, sevanam bhakti ruchate. Uh, so bhakti is free of these uh, conceptions. It is uh, purely on the uh, platform of consciousness in relation with Krishna. Uh, because consciousness means to be Krishna conscious in relation to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And if we, if we are with our body, mind and words and intelligence are always fixed, uh, then we are considered liberated soul. Uh, those who are in Rupa Goswami says, those who are uh, engaging their body, mind and words in the service of Krishna, they are already liberated souls in this body. And in the Bhagavad Gita also it is stated uh, that, that uh, only if one is purified from the bodily concept of life, engaging on the transcendental platform, sit be situated on the transcendental platform of Brahma Buddha, Prasanatma, Nasochati, Nakankshati, then we'll become free of hankering and lamentation. And that is the platform where pure devotional service starts. Atbhaktim Lapate Param. So that means bhakti is completely on the transcendental platform, bhakti yoga, and the process of sadhana, uh, of sadhana bhakti, uh, elevates us, purifies us, purifies our senses, our mind, our intelligence, our whole, act also the activities. So by engaging steadily in sadhana bhakti, uh, under the guidance of the spiritual master, who is who is not only speaking bhakti process, but also lives the bhakti process. No, that's actually what Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda show us in their, in their teachings and in their lives. They were not only uh, uh, speaking something or giving lectures or Bhagavad Katha uh, uh, to impress uh, the audience, but, or to have kirtan to impress audience, but in private they're completely something else. No, they are fully lift that what they preach. No? That means the the the, wor the the words and the activities are the same. Mm. Some they speak good but not good in action. Some they act good but they are not so good in speaking. But in in great personalities uh, we can see like Haridas Thakur was glorified like by th like that by Sanatan Goswami. Uh, in great personalities, we can see action and words. It's all it's the same. Uh, it's not that we speak something and act differently. So it must be in one line. This is yoga. Yoga must be everything in one line related with Krishna. And this is what Srila Vyasadev uh, did. He fixed his mind on the uh, Purusham Purnam, that means the complete Supreme Lord, not a Mahavishnu or a, a, any Vishnu form, expansion of Krishna. Uh, Purusha Purnam means uh, Shiva Goswami. And the previous Acharyas explain uh, Purusha Purnam means he actually fixed his mind on, the, on, on Krishna, on the Supreme Personality, Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is Purusha Purnam, Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Bachami. Uh, he was fixed completely on that Supreme Lord, Purnam, because he is complete. He is uh, Purna Bhagavan, uh, as stated. Eteva, uh, what is the verse? Bhagavatam. Uh, hmm. Anyway, the Bhagavatam verse, Ete Chamsa Kala Pumsham, Krishna's do, Bhagavan Svayam, Bhagavan Svayam. So it is Krishna, Sutta Goswami, he points out, it is Krishna who is ultimately Bhagavan Svayam. There's no other incarnation, Bhagavan Svayam, or Purna Bhagavan, Purna Purusha. Purna Purusha is only given to Krishna. 
because in Krishna, all avatars are emanated, they are expansions of, of him. Huh? It, 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 uh, it, yeah, there are expa expansions of him. It's not that uh, Krishna is an expansion of, an, of, of, an, of, of Vishnu. So it is Krishna who, upon whom Silvia Dev uh, was meditating. meditating. And uh, he became co completely uh, convinced about the principle of Bhagavatam, to write down the Bhagavatam. He felt compassion for the fallen souls because he saw they're completely in the grasp of Maya. They're completely entangled in the labyrinth of Maya, in the shadow energy of the Lord. This energy cannot touch the Lord. She's always behind him in the back, in, in humble position. The Lord is not touched by her. No? But the living entities in this material world, they are touched. They're, they're entangled. And therefore, Siliviyasate, if he compiled these uh, literatures, the Sattvika Samhita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's a transcendental literature, purifying everyone who is reading it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Nityananda, they also appeared uh, simultaneously uh, for that purpose, uh, to teach us, uh, by their own example, how to practice the Bhagavatam principles huh? and the Bhagavad Gita principles. As Prabhupada is pointing out, Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is um, uh, asking everyone to surrender unto him, to him, Sarva Dharma Parityacham, Mami Kam Shara But the uh, people misunderstood him, they misinterpreted him, they didn't surrender. And therefore, uh, Krishna, he thought, when he, uh, when, when he left from this world, that I, ha I will uh, actually didn't spread the pu uh, pure devotional service uh, to the people. I want to read one section. So, one moment. I cannot find it now. So anyway, uh, this, uh, so Lord, Ch Lord Chaitanya, uh, Krishna, he thinks about that he missed to give this uh, Vracha Prema, this love to Krishna, in the, in the mood of uh, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya to, the, to all the people in the world. He only gave it to a few rare ones here in Vrindavan. And that's why he actually considered oh, my mission was not complete, completed when I appeared as Krishna because I removed the world from the burden of the demons. I, uh, I benefited my uh, devotees uh, who are already surrendered to me and a few rare ones who joined me from other universes and other worlds who got the privilege, the qualification to appear in Krishna's Leela on this planet at that time. So, I, but the, the rest of the world, you know, actually what, didn't got the maximum benefit. And that, that's why uh, Krishna, he uh, considered, I have to come again, uh, I have to come again. And, and this time I have to uh, not only give it and share this uh, nectar with, of rasa with a few who are surrendered to me, but I, sh I want to give it to everyone. Uh, at least I want to give the opp opportunity to everyone. Ultimately, it's then the free will of uh, every li free living entity to accept or not to accept. 
But Lord Chaitanya even considered, even if they don't accept, I will try to give them. Uh, I will overflood them. Uh, because he thought, I, I brought a whole uh, bunch of fruits here and, and wanted to sell it on the marketplace, but uh, uh, nobody wants to buy it. So therefore he considered, let me make a, how would you call it, a sell-out, uh, completely sell-out, like in the shopping centers, you know. They have sometimes these uh, special sales where they make uh, cheap prices, 50%, 70% and more percent uh, cheaper discount. And so Lord Chaitanya thought, okay, whatever they want to give, uh, I will give you. But then even nobody wanted to give uh, even a little, then he thought, okay, then I will give you even for free. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is Lord Chaitanya uh, mercy, Nityananda mercy. Uh, Nityananda is even considered more merciful than Lord Chaitanya. Is uh, Lord Chaitanya's Patita Pavana, Prabhupada told, and um, Lord Nityananda is Mahapatita Pavana. He is even great, more merciful. He was even merciful to those who were rejected. Uh, there were some rejected or offenders. Lord Chaitanya even wanted to kill them. He wanted to kill Jagai Madhai because they offended his dear Nitai. Nitai, Nityananda is more dear to Lord Chaitanya than his own life. Uh, so when he heard that Nityananda was uh, attacked by Jagaya Madhai, that they hurt him and blood flowing out from his uh, head, then he, Lord Chaitanya became very furious and he, he wanted to call his Sudarshan Chakra and make them uh, uh, head shorter. Uh, so but Nityananda, he fell to the Lord's lotus feet and asked him, don't do that. Please not, my Lord, because you came, you are known as the Patita Pavana, as the saver of the fallen. Uh, not only fallen women, also fallen everyone. Uh, everyone is fallen in the age of Kali. So, so uh, uh, Nityananda Prabhu, he, he told to Lord Chaitanya, if you want to kill Chagaya Madhai, uh, then you have to kill, kill everyone. Because in Kali Yuga, everyone is Chagai Madhai. Uh, everyone is fallen like them, alcoholic. Uh, not following Dharma properly. Uh, Chagai Madhai were very elevated, uh, actually born in Brahmana family. But they became the most degraded, most fallen, because they completely f deviated from the Brahmana principle. So Bhakti Yoga has nothing to do with the Varnashram directly. Varnashram can help a certain extent, <coughs> uh, but it, it will not bring us to, it, it, it will not make us, bak, it will not give us bhakti. Uh -huh. So the proof is Jagai Mata, the completely deviated from Varnashram, uh, but ultimately they receive the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu. Uh, and because they received the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu, they also received the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Because it was Lord Chaitanya who told Nityananda, I give, I, I, I give you the word, to, uh, to, you are very dear to me, and, uh, to, I, and you are the reservoir of the, this Krishna Prema, and of this holy name. So to whoever you choose, to give this Krishna Prem and this love to Krishna, it should be like that. Uh, even if they are not my devotees, even if they are not surrendered unto me. If Nityananda chooses and uh, chooses somebody will take this Krishna consciousness and he uh, gives him this mercy, his mercy, uh, then this person will become also my devotee, will get my mercy. Uh, he will become Krishna conscious. Actually, in this age of Kali Yuga, we have no other opportunity to become Krishna conscious or to attain uh, Goloka Vrindavan without the mercy of uh, Gora Nitai. Hmm. They are most merciful, Paramakaruna, Bahu, Dvichana, Nitai, Gora Chandra. Hmm. They are very, very merciful, Paramakaruna. Uh, so they appeared, Sabashi Romani, 
uh, to teach us uh, Kevala Ananda Kanda, Saba Avatar, Sara Sava Shiromani, Kevala Ananda Kanda. They appeared to give us the Kevala Ananda Kanda, the spotless path, the pure path of devotional service, uh, Bhakti Kanda. But the price is of this of this mercy uh, is uh, Lochanda Stakur is singing Vishaya Chatiya Sirasa Machiya Mukhe Bolo Hari Hari. Give up all your attachments, your sins, and just fill your mouth with the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And in this way, uh, uh, everyone will become benefited. But Lochan Das Thakur, he prays, but I'm so poor, I'm so fallen, although this mercy is very easily available by the mercy of Gornitai, uh, I, I'm not touched by it, by this mer great mercy. That's natural for Vaishnava. Many of the Vaishnava poets, they don't consider themselves liberated or elevated, although they're very great devotees, very much uh, elevated in their bhakti towards uh, Gornitai and Radha Krishna. But they are always considering themselves, oh, this great uh, flood or ocean of mercy that what Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda brought over flooded everyone and everyone is drowning it, in it, but me not. Uh, that's also Ramachandra Kaviraj. He composed this one, one song, you know. Everyone is flowing in this ocean, drowning and flowing in the ocean of, of love to Krishna, brought by the merciful Lord Chaitanya. But unfortunately, I myself, although there, uh, everyone is floating in it, I'm not touched by it. Uh, therefore, he's crying. Uh, I'm so unfortunate. And of course, these personalities are act actually in it, but don't, they don't consider themselves, now I'm elevated, now I'm freed, now I'm the reservoir, or how to say, the receptacle of Lord Chaitanya's and Lord Nitananda's mercy. Uh, a devotee never thinks like that. He always <coughs> considers himself lowly and fallen. Uh, Queen Kunti, she thought like that. Uh, everyone actually should think like that. That's the key to come to Raja Bhakti, to the platform of uh, bhakti in Vrindavan, uh, the dainya, this uh, fallen condition. This is the gopi mood. This is every chavasi mood. Uh, this, to consider oneself, my life is completely useless, wasted, whatever I am, you know, very intelligent, beautiful, nicely educated, etc., famous, etc. All this has no meaning to me. Uh, if I if I don't uh, can meet Krishna, if I don't, if I cannot meet Krishna and serve him with my capacity, this is the gopis mood. Huh? They always thought about that 24 hours a day. Therefore, they con they are considered the supreme because they were always absorbed 100%, 100% in uh, Krishna consciousness. Huh? In the night, they associated with Krishna, and in the daytime, they were meditating about Krishna. All the time, they were thinking, sometimes in union, sometimes in separation. They thought, My bo the body that I have doesn't belong to me. It is Krishna's body. Let Krishna uh, enjoy this body and all my qualities and everything that I have. Uh, so they gave up everything. No? Even the attachment to the family, to the, bo the body, to possessions. Uh, name, fame, glory, uh, it is, uh, uh, how the people will look at them in the society. They reject everything because their only interest was to give Krishna pleasure. And what was Krishna's meditation? Because we should not only think a uh, devotee is meditating about Krishna, Go Gopis is meditating about Krishna, Gopas meditating about Krishna, Mother Yashoda meditating about Krishna. A devotee in this world is meditating about Krishna and engaging in Krishna's service. What Krishna actually is thinking, he thinks about the devotees. So therefore he is always absorbed. He's not thinking about the tip of his nose. 
He's not thinking about himself. He thinks about the devotees. One time there was, he told to, Krishna told to uh, Arjuna, to Duryodhan, because it was before Kurukshetra war. It was a uh, decision had to made, hey, to make uh, who, who will get uh, uh, Krishna's army and who will get uh, Krishna. Krishna. Uh, so there was a, he had a whole Akshahini army of Yadus and uh, Krishna told to, to both of them so the first tomorrow morning whom I see uh, you, I will, you can uh, I would say you can ask me what you like you can have me or my army uh, so Ach- uh, Arjuna was first Duryodhan came later and Arjuna, but Arjuna t- didn't took side on Krishna's head Krishna took rest. He rested on his bed. Arjuna was sitting on his side, uh, on, uh, sitting on, on, the, on the feet, not on the, on the head, side. Uh, so when Duryodhan entered, uh, <laughs> then, then um, he thought, oh, Arjuna is already here, but the fool, fortunately, is uh, sitting on uh, Krishna's feet not on, on the side of his head. Then, therefore, he, he speculated that naturally if, if uh, Krishna will wake up in the morning, he will, he will see me first, uh, and not Arjuna who is on, on the feet, uh, because who is looking down to the feet. Uh, but Krishna is exa- uh, exactly that, uh, because uh, Krishna is, is, is uh, Bhakta Vatsalya. Uh, that's the most prominent feature in Krishna's nature the affection to his devotee. And where is his devotee situated? Not on the, on the tip of his nose. Not on his head. Not on the side of his head. He's, he's situated on, on his lotus feet. Huh? There the devotee is situated. Therefore Krishna naturally <coughs> when he wakes up in the morning huh, then he looks not on the side right or left but who is here. Because mostly those who are on the side, you know, they may be not the persons uh, who are his, uh, who are very dear and very uh, much needed for him. Uh, so he looks to his feet, uh, because his servants are always situated on his feet. So he sees Arjuna. Oh, Arjuna, you are here. He did. He, he completely ignored Duryodhan, uh, because you look here, you know. And Duryodhan, he was amazed. Oh. Krishna looking up on Arjuna and Arjuna and Krishna tells to Arjuna, so what you what you decided overnight, what you like. So Arjuna decided, I only like to have you. I only want to have you. Uh, Krishna said, I will not fight on the on the on the battle. Uh, I will not take participate. Uh, I w- but uh, but I will be- become the charioteer. Either of Arjuna or of Duridan. But Duridan he didn't want to have Krishna as charioteer, he wanted to have Krishna's army. Uh, and, uh, and Arjuna was happy to have Krishna as his charioteer. And, and Krishna is glorified, mostly glorified because of this aspect. Uh, there was one illiterate bhakta in South India, Lord Chaitanya met him when he was in South Indian tour as a sannyasi. So he met one, one devotee in Kormakshetra. I think it was in somewhere, Kormakshetra. And, uh, but he was illiterate. And he always tried to read Bhagavad Gita, although he could not properly pronounce. Uh, some brahmanas who were very scholarly, reciting very nicely Bhagavad Gita, they make, make, make jokes about him and Krimas. And, mm. <laughs> what he's doing here, you know, he's not m- make proper pronunciation of Gita. So what kind of benefit he will gain? Arjuna we- approached this uh, person because uh, Lord Chaitanya saw that this person always has tears in his eyes. Uh, so he asked him, what you're doing here? Oh, I try to read Bhagavad Gita. I, uh, although I'm illiterate, I cannot properly pronounce uh, Sanskrit verses of the Gita. Uh, but my Guru Maharaj, he told me I should do it every day. Uh, I should read and recite Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, I'm doing it to please my Guru Maharaj. Uh, and then Lord Chaitanya said, but if you don't uh, can read and understand and recite Bhagavad Gita properly, then uh, 
why you have tears in your eyes? Huh? You have high fever or some, emo some emotion must be there, not? Kein hoi schnupf, another. And so, <coughs> so then the, this uh, pra illiterate Brahmana, he was a Brahmana, uh, illiterate. So then he told, I always have this picture of Krishna and Arjuna in front of me, in my, in my mind. Uh, in my mind. Uh, always, because at that time there was no paintings or pictures or photographs. So he had it in his mind, this picture. Uh, because he completely understood the great mercy of Lord Krishna. He took the humble position as a servitor of his devotee. Uh, Parta Sarati. The Sarati, that means the charioteer of uh, Partha, Arjuna. And because I always have this picture of uh, Partha Sarati, Krishna as charioteer of his uh, devotee, uh, that means his devotee was in higher position. Uh, and he was his servant. When I meditate about this picture, tears flow from me, I'm very moved. Uh, so then Lord Chaitanya, he declared, you know, that this person, he understood Bhagavad Gita. All those who are very scholarly here, they actually have no idea what is Bhagavad Gita. Uh, so you see, the Bhagavad Gita, to understand Bhagavad Gita is actually very simple for the simple-hearted. Even uh, therefore, uh, Kaviraj Goswami, he points out, even I an illiterate uh, child uh, can uh, understand Krishna's Leela. Uh, Uh, if he has the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And if you uh, are very literate, very scholarly, and, but you have no devotion actually, no bhakti, and not the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda, and the spiritual master, then even though you are perfectly know and can recite Bhagavad Gita, uh, you actually don't understand. Like one time a person came to Prabhupada and he told, I know whole Bhagavad Gita by heart. And then uh, Prabhupada was not very much impressed and he told, so uh, can you uh, tell me one verse, one sloka of uh, realization of, the, of these uh, 700 Gita verses, slokas? And the person, he could not speak. He could not tell anything about his realization of the Bhagavad Gita slokas. And then, therefore, Prabhupada he, uh, showed, you know, if, what's the use if you know whole Bhagavad Gita by heart, but it, if you don't actually realize the message of the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, and that's the main thing. Uh, that's the main thing of Krishna. And that's what, what most of the people actually missed who study Bhagavad Gita. They missed to understand Krishna and the bhakti, the surrender, and to, to develop love and affection to Krishna and to serve him with all heart and with all devotion, with body, mind and words. That, that point they miss. Yeah. But they become very proud on their intellectual knowledge. Uh. But Upanishad says uh, uh, that, we, that we cannot understand and realize Krishna with our words, with our intelligence. Nayam atma pravachanena labhya na medhaya na bahulna shrutena. And also not by studying elaborately the Vedic scriptures and the Puranas, we cannot understand him. How is understand? How is understood? Is understood by bhakti. Bhakti ham ekahagraya. When the Lord wants to reveal himself, like when the sun is not risen in the, in the, day, in the night, huh? You, have can, you can have a torch, you cannot see the sun. Maybe some uh, foolish person he thinks, I will find out about the sun, I uh, have a very powerful torch. Uh, and so I will find out where the sun is. Uh, but it will not work like that. Uh, it will only, the sun will rise on his own accord. And then when the sun rises, everything becomes clear. Uh, everything around you and also for yourself and everything around you will become clear. You will have clear picture about your, yourself and your surrounding. <coughs> so when Krishna appears in your heart, when he, uh, he, when he rises in your, your heart, that means when Krishna Bhakti rises in your heart, when the Bhagavatam or the, Bhagavad, the, 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 
esoteric or the confidential teaching of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam rises in your heart and everything becomes clear like the sunshine and the darkness will move away. All this ignorance will go away. So therefore bhakti, there is no, no more superior process than bhakti. Narad Muni, he tells to Sili Vyasadev in his, uh, in his teachings that um, actually by telling about his la- life, Vyasadev was very curious how actually Narada got this uh, position of Narada because he was previously a, the son of a Shudrani, low class person. Uh, so how is it, how was it possible for you to become uh, such an elevated devotee, son of Brahma? So Sili Vyasadev, uh, uh, Narad Muni r- uh, narrated his story, life story, how he, um, when he was a young, small boy, young boy, uh, uh, the Bhakti Vedantas came to his house and stayed there for uh, some time, and he had association with them. He heard. Uh, he heard when they were speaking about uh, Krishna and about devotional service and f- philosophy of Vedanta. And uh, by their permission, I also got sometimes uh, Mahaprasadam from them, Maha Mahaprasadam. So they became very uh, merciful to me. And by their mercy, later on, when my mother died and they left from home, when my b- mother died, so I left the home unattached. And I went on, pil- on pilgrimage. I went uh, through the mountains and valleys and uh, cities and villages and uh, hills. Uh, and and, and, and uh, one time I became to I, I arrived to an, an one forest and there I was meditating uh, about the, uh, according to the direction of the Bhakti Vedantas, and because I had faith in the words of, of uh, these great souls. Uh, in, in, in a short time, I got the darshan of the Lord. Uh, the Lord who was first in my heart, I saw him. Uh, then uh, he became visible also outside, but only for a short time. And then uh, he disappeared. And I became very devastated. I thought, oh, now I had the object of my life. I achieved it, I attained it, but now he's gone. Uh, but then the merciful Lord appeared again in form of sound, and it, he, uh, he told me, don't be sorry, my dear boy. The form that you have seen now, this uh, uh, Purna Purusha, uh, this lo- uh, Lord, uh, it's very rarely to be seen, even by the great transcendentalist, but, I, but don't be sorry, because you can always stay in association with me by the transcendental sound, by chanting the holy name, by chanting your mantra. But actually, uh, what the sages have, have given you. Uh, that because the sages, before they left, uh, they initiated him in the mantra. They gave him mantra initiation, diksha. And uh, the Lord encouraged him, always uh, chant this, uh, meditate about this transcendental sound, and in this way, ultimately, you will come to me. You will always uh, be co- feel connected with me. Mm. And uh, Narad Muni concluded that uh, it is true that by the yoga process, a, a yogi ca- uh, can become purified. Huh? His mind will become uh, peaceful, but only for a certain time. Huh? Only to a certain extent. It will not completely purify him because there is a slight agitation of the material nature. The yogi's meditation will break uh, and he may be fall away from his uh, meditation platform. Uh, but by the bhakti, bhakti process, uh, uh, if one becomes fixed, uh, uh, one can make steadily progress, one will not become bewildered by the external energy of the Lord. One can remain fixed in devotion and make gradually more and more prog- <coughs> progress in the process or to attain the lotus feet of Krishna and to attain ultimately love to him and mm. uh, enter in his eternal lila in uh, Goloka Vindavan. So I'm stopping here. Hare Krishna, Goisa Prabhupada. Any question?
Ja, waar nou al? Ja, de fallen woman. <laughs> If someone may say you, we just leave it away, then we don't disturb any woman. We don't we just don't mention about fallen woman because anyway it is said everybody is fallen. No. It means it looks like Prabhupada really wanted to specially mention the fallen woman. Yeah, Kunti Devi also. She considered as she knew that the woman actually in, in, in connection with the man is in the lower position. Uh, but she will become uh, very powerful if she follows her street dharma. That means uh, her obligations and her duties in uh, to the husband, to the family, to the dharma, uh, then and also to the religion, to devotion to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because you see, in most of religion, and also in ISKCON, uh, the women are more prominent than the men. Uh, more Mataji is joining. More women are joining. And they are sometimes very enthousi enthusiastic. In certain yatras, you can see they are more, more uh, powerful, more enthusiastic than men. But it is a fact that uh, Stri, Shudra, Dvicha, Bandunam. Eh? In the, uh, the Stri, Shudra, and the Dvicha, Bandu, the, um, the relatives of uh, Brahmanas, but who have not the qualification of Bra Bra Brahmana culture, uh, even they can become elevated to Bhakti. This is available for them. Therefore, uh, mm -hmm. Sila Vyasadev, he wrote this uh, Mahabharata. And ultimately, he also gave the Srimad Bhagavatam to give everyone the opportunity to uh, come in contact with, uh, with this Bhakti process. Yoga process, Jnana process, I would say intellectual knowledge, studying of Vedas, Vedanta, not possible for women. Uh, but bhakti is possible. Ah. Even for men it's difficult. For most of the men it's difficult to study Vedanta or Vedic literatures in Kali Yuga. We have not the capacity, the, uh, the samskara for it. And because in Kali Yuga almost nobody has the samskara for studying Vedic literature, so it's only one process recommended. Uh, it's the Kevala Ananda Kanda. Bacha Bacha Bai, Chetani Nitai. Therefore, we should worship Gornitai because they brought us the, the, the Sankitan, uh, the chanting of the Holy Name. Uh, they're the Sankitana Pita, the inaugurators, the fathers of the Sankita movement, the protectors of the Yuga Dharma. Yeah. Some other question? Okay, Hare Krishna.